Hello guys, welcome back to the video. Today we are reacting to Film Theory, Aladdin's Mistake, How to Marry Jasmine in One Wish, Disney Aladdin by the Film Theory. So we special 3, 2, 1, let's react. Can we all agree that A Whole New World is like the most romantic Disney song of all time? I mean, a magical starlight flight around the world? Beautiful. And then you mix in some of the best lyrics of all time, like, When did you last let your heart decide? Smooth as butter there, Aladdin. Soaring, tumbling, freewheeling through an endless diamond sky. Gorgeous poetry. Don't you dare close your eyes. Oh. Uh... Yeah, um, I mean, I know that name. Don't you dare close your eyes. No, no, no. What'd you say there, Aladdin? You know, real talk, Aladdin. Maybe you don't need to be a prince to get Jasmine. Maybe... Don't uh... you dare. He's like, don't, don't you dare close your eyes. No, 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 no. I don't know. You just stop interrupting your beautiful love song with creepy threats. Just saying. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the YouTube equivalent of Apu. Getting my dirty paws and everything that you don't want me touching and then ruining it for everyone. Today, we're finally talking about Aladdin. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. Indeed, it is hot. YouTube and TikTok star Will Smith, because with it being the holiday. YouTube and TikTok star Will Smith? He does TikTok now? I have never known. He's been acting, and then being a YouTuber, and now he does TikTok. Great. Today's I finally got around to seeing the Fresh Prince get decked out like a smurf to reboot Aladdin. I gotta be honest, there was a lot more screen time dedicated to the genie crushing hard on a human handmaid than I was expecting. Look at her handmaid. Oh, and she's going to get some punch. Feeling a little thirsty myself. The reboot genuinely I don't know what, how they get these movie clips here because Aladdin the reboot is, is that like the reboot or, I don't know, it's not on Netflix or anything. I don't know how he got this, these, how the crew, their crew, or Matt Pat has, has these movie clips because I don't know where they get them. Do they have partnerships with Disney so that they can get these clips or, I don't know. Surprised me. I did not anticipate walking out of this movie contemplating the physics of genie human relations. Glad we rebooted this animated classic to insert the clearly important story thread. Oh, yeah, and to also insert the fact that Jasmine is totally woke in this version, even though she was already the most outspoken and independent princess from the original animated era. The law says you must, must be, be married, married to, to a, a prince. prince. The law is wrong. But, you know, maybe that was too subtle. Or maybe the audience was just distracted by her outfit back then or something. So now we're gonna beat it over your head with a song about being strong AF and having a voice of your own. Which, ironically enough, no one hears because it's a song that's happening in your head. Womp womp. Confused messaging is confusing. But if I'm being honest, I really like this movie. Definitely more than I expected. Yeah, me too. It was in summer, so a lot of things were happening, but it was a pretty good movie. I'm just gonna say that. Pretty good movie. And the sort of land with the genie and the other... Like the, I don't know who it was, but like the assistant of the princess. I don't remember her name or anything, but that's a new thing about the Aladdin reboot. Did and definitely not as much as the original. Kind of sums up my feelings about most of these live action remakes, except for the Jungle Book one, which was really awesome. Anyway, as you might have suspected, revisiting this movie also got me to revisit all the old nitpicks people have about the movie's wishing system. Specifically, the nitpicks around Aladdin's first wish to become a prince. I wish for you to make me a prince. I found it interesting that in both the original 1993 version, as well as the better at not being racist but worse at being entertaining live action remake, that Aladdin first wish ultimately goes nowhere. It's a waste. In both versions of the story, it just doesn't work. Sure, we get ourselves a delightful song and dance number, but both times, Jasmine is fairly unimpressed, and Aladdin is eventually recognized to be the old street rat he was from before, which honestly brings up some interesting questions about how exactly Genie's powers work, but that's a theory for another day. Now, obviously Aladdin's number one goal is to marry Princess Jasmine, and the law says that she can only marry a prince, and the Genie can't make people fall in love, so I get 
where Aladdin's coming from with this wish. It is the best workaround that Aladdin can think up, but clearly it doesn't work. So that begs the question, what should Aladdin have done? Given the rules that the film has established for its own universe, and also the historical slash political system in which the movie set, what would have been the best wish Aladdin could have made to marry Jasmine and live happily ever after? The best wish would probably be, I wish that the law that makes it so that the princess can only marry a prince would disappear and then they would go yeah because they already had a connection at the first at the start so if he just said i wish the law to be removed from I don't know, the Book of Laws, then, yeah, that could probably work. After in only one wish, which then leaves two others left for, I don't know, whatever he wants. A lifetime supply of classic 90s snack foods, 3D Doritos, you were so gnarly, and you were so dead before your time. So let's not waste any more time. Mr. Aladdin, sir, what should your one wish be? Let's do some research, get creative, you ain't never had a theory like me. In order to give Aladdin the best advice possible, we need to first narrow down where the events of the movie are taking place so we can at least give him some insight into the political system that we're dealing with. Cause guess what? Agrabah doesn't really exist. Now obviously we're dealing with the Sultanate. He is the Sultan. But what exactly does being the Sultan mean? Well, a Sultanate is really just a term for any region ruled by a leader who bears the Islamic title of Sultan. Sultanates have been found historically from Turkey all the way to Indonesia, which as you can imagine creates a huge problem for us. We are talking about a massive area of the globe. As such, it should come as no surprise that different sultanates are going to have themselves different rules, different structures, different levels of intermingling between religion and politics. As such, it's extremely important to nail down Agrabah's location so that we can give Aladdin accurate and regionally specific advice. Lucky for us, we do get some clues from the movies as to where our fictional setting might really exist. Some people are quick to point out that the design of the sultan's palace is awfully reminiscent of the Taj Mahal, which, when you know it is located in Agra, India. And Agra sounds a whole lot like Agrabah. So many people conclude that Agrabah must be somewhere in India, but I don't really think that's our best conclusion. At the beginning of the animated Aladdin, the merchant mentions Agrabah's relation to the River Jordan. Welcome to Agrabah, city of mystery, of enchantment. The, finest merchandise this time in the, river the Jordan River is just off the Mediterranean Sea in modern-day Syria, Israel, and, unsurprisingly, Jordan. Additionally, the song Arabian Nights pretty strongly implies that we're in Arabia, which historically referred to what's now Saudi Arabia and the surrounding countries. So, if we're in what's historically known as Arabia, and we have ourselves some proximity to the River Jordan, then Agrabah is most likely part of the Ottoman Empire, which sprawled from Turkey through the Ottoman Empire through much of the Middle East right. from the 14th century until the early 1900s. Still a massive area, but much more targeted than we were before. So, if we accept that Agrabah is somewhere in the Ottoman Empire, is it good for Aladdin to wish to become a prince? Well, it depends on what you mean by prince, exactly. Strictly speaking, a prince in this form of government would literally be the son of the Sultan. So, if his goal is to marry the daughter of a Sultan, best be sure to specify that he wants to be a foreign prince. Otherwise a foreign prince. You want to be a foreign prince because you don't want to marry your sister. Surprise that it's prankster genie might fulfill on his wish to the letter and marrying Jasmine might get super awkward super quickly depending on how the genie chooses to fulfill on that wish. So Aladdin, to make sure that his wish is airtight, wishes to become a foreign prince. That's the fix then, right? Well... Not really. In the very earliest days of the Ottoman Empire, marriages with foreign powers were tactical. But Aladdin is allegedly the prince of a place so small and unimportant that Jasmine's never heard of it before. She can't even find it on a map. I've been trying to find the Babwa, but it doesn't seem to be on any of my maps. As such, it's highly unlikely that the Sultan would be willing to marry her off to such a minor figure in the greater political scheme of things. That said, there is another consideration here. The Ottoman Empire was divided into provinces called Eyalets, which are further divided into districts called Sanjaks. And while the government of these provinces and districts were not hereditary, meaning that they shouldn't have had princes per se, many of the Sanjaks were established to serve lordships that had existed before the territory was a part of the empire. Therefore, if Aladdin made himself part of the elite class of one of the
the Sanjaks that may technically make him a quote unquote prince eligible to marry Jasmine. The problem here though is while he might be eligible at that point, he wouldn't be very special. There were hundreds upon hundreds of Sanjaks throughout the empire, so again, it's unlikely that any title relating to that Sanjak is going to get him much respect in Agrabah. It would be like rolling into Washington DC and demanding respect because you're the member of a city council of a small town in Montana. They probably never heard of you, they probably don't care, they're probably going to send you back to your herd of buffalo. So Aladdin's wish to be a prince isn't a very good one. Whether you're interpreting that to mean that he'd have to be related to Jasmine, gross, or otherwise a small player in a very local government. So that pretty much sums up why the wish he made wouldn't really work the way he made it, which means to the question, what should Aladdin have wished for here? Well, since the Sultan made the law in the first place, why not skip being a prince and go directly to the top? Wish to become the Sultan himself, and he could presumably change the law and allow Jasmine to marry whomever she wanted. So what if Aladdin had wished himself to be a Sultan? Unfortunately, there are two pretty big problems here, too. The first is that genie wish granting doesn't seem to magically affect everyone involved in that wish, so that they just automatically go along with what the wish was for. Jafar winds up learning this the hard way in the live-action Aladdin remake when he himself wishes to be Sultan and starts ordering around the Imperial Guard. Hakim, you obey the Sultan, so you obey me now. And then fast forward one Jasmine speech later and he's suddenly got a mutiny on his hands. My princess, forgive me. Guards! Arrest the vizier. Let's think this through. The Imperial Guard basically just decides whom they want to follow regardless of who actually holds the title of Sultan. And if they're willing to turn on the Grand Vizier, the closest advisor to the Sultan, do we really think that they would have respected Aladdin's authority if he just showed up and magically made himself the Sultan? They would have probably had him executed for trying to usurp the throne. And that's a whole mess that Aladdin doesn't want to get himself mixed up in. The Ottoman Empire wasn't exactly shy about committing executions. And, well, let's just say that the quality of your execution could vary a lot. If you were lucky, you got yourself a quick and pleasant way to die, like being strangled to death by someone's bare hands. If you were unlucky, you might get yourself hung from a meat hook chainsaw massacre style. The Ottoman Empire did not mess around. And that's not all. Let's assume that the Imperial Guard and the rest of the government was okay with Aladdin living as the usurping Sultan. Even if they were okay with it, other people definitely wouldn't be. You see, succession in the Ottoman Empire was often a pretty messy business. When a Sultan died, any of his sons who wanted to claim the throne, which, spoiler alert, was all the sons, conducted a sort of ancient fortnight, a battle royale in which the last one standing was the new sultan. But Matt Pat, Aladdin wouldn't have to worry about that because the sultan's only child was Jasmine. True, you're absolutely right, but it doesn't mean that he's out of the woods just yet. In its later years, the Ottoman Empire practiced what's called agnatic succession, meaning that the eldest living male in the dynasty would take over when the sultan died. So if the that's loving mail. That wouldn't really work out because he only has a female, but not a male. So, uh, what is that? Sultan had himself a brother, or a male cousin, or some crusty old uncle. Any of those would likely have had a similarly strong claim to the throne and could have tackled Aladdin. And trust me, when you took the throne that someone else wanted in the Ottoman Empire, you were gonna have yourself a bad time. Assassinations happened all the time in this culture. Now, there are lots of assassination stories from this period in history, but my personal favorite is Sultan Osman II, who was assassinated by a guy called Get this, Pelavon the Oil Wrestler. But oh wait, my friends, there's more to this story, you see. Pelavon the Oil Wrestler? Why do you wrestle oil? I don't know. The method of death in this assassination? It's officially listed as, quote, compression of the testicles. What? What? The Sultan died of compression of the testicles. What? Wow. Just so many questions there, Pelavon. Long story short, Too late. Aladdin is going to have himself a lot of problems if he wishes to become the Sultan. The nicest of which is that everyone ignores him, and the worst of which is that someone is going to come and squeeze his magic lamp so hard that his diamonds pop out of the rough. All right. So, it's going to be hard for Aladdin to hop into this line of succession without either getting himself ignored if he shoots too low, or killed if he shoots too high. So, what if he just gets creative and breaks the system outright? What if Aladdin just 
just wishes Agrabah stopped being a Sultanate. And that would get rid of the rule that prevents him from marrying Jasmine, right? Well, it would, but then it would open up a whole new set of problems for him. For commoners during the Ottoman Empire, young men and women had zero say in whom they got to marry. It was really just an arrangement brokered by the two sets of parents. Aladdin has himself no parents around to help him even approach the situation. And we know that his long-lost father isn't going to be getting involved in his life until he needs help finding the ultimate treasure, hashtag straight to video sequel. So Aladdin has himself an uphill battle. He somehow needs to get the law changed without altering Agrabah's social order or ruffling the feathers of those in charge by creating a successional crisis. So when you actually look at Aladdin's situation, it's pretty darn complex. He has one wish to get Jasmine to marry him, but most of those wishes are either going to be a waste, like him asking to become a prince, or worse, he wishes something that winds up getting him executed. But there is a Yeah, I mean, what is the perfect solution for this? Nothing, everything is neutral or good. There's no downside a solution here. There is actually one wish that practically guarantees him Jasmine's hand in marriage. Aladdin should wish for Jasmine to become the Sultan. After their flirtatious meeting in the market, Jasmine already has the hots for Aladdin. Certainly much more so than any of her other suitors, like that weird blonde prince guy from the live-action movie. So, she would be incentivized to do away with the law that states that she has to marry a prince. If she were the Sultan, that's totally within her right to do, as Sultans effectively answer to no one during the Ottoman Empire. So that box gets itself a big check mark. Next question, would this create the same crisis of succession as if Aladdin became the Sultan? Well, it's not likely. Remember that when Jafar names himself the Sultan, it takes Jasmine less than five minutes to turn the Imperial Guard to her side. My princess, forgive me. Guards! Arrest the vizier! The Sultan himself wouldn't seem to put up too much of a fight either, because he literally gives up control of Agrabah to her at the end of the live-action remake. And hey, why shouldn't she rule? She's charismatic enough to lead, she has Agrabah's best interests at heart, plus she has herself a pet tiger and she likes to study maps. But I'm sure you're all thinking one thing here. Would the Ottoman Empire have been ready to accept a female as Sultan? Here's the twist. Yeah, actually they would. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the Ottoman Empire had what's called the Sultanate of Women, in which the wives and mothers of the Sultan had themselves great political and social power while running the day-to-day -day operations of the Empire. And yes, there are instances in history of female Sultans or Sultanas. There's even an instance where one, Razia al-Din, refused the title Sultana in the 13th century because she didn't want her title to be distinct from a man's. There's even some occasions in history in which a female Sultan ruled without connection to a male Sultan. If Aladdin really wants the best chance at being with Jasmine in one wish and not setting everyone against him, his best bet is not to wish for his own power, but to wish for Jasmine to finally get hers. And ironically enough, it would get that strong female theme across way more effectively than any imaginary power ballad ever could. But hey, that's- See ya guys, thanks for watching, and of course, peace out, people. Peace.